सर सैयद अहमद खान बॉर्न इन 1817 एंड डाइड इन 1898 ये ग्रेट थिंकर एंड ये मैन ऑफ एक्शन सेक्युलर अप्रोच ऑफ सर सैयद अहमद खान एंड एक्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम हिज फेमस गुरदासपुर स्पीच जनवरी 27 1884 O Hindus and Muslims O Hindus and Muslims do you belong to country other than India do you belong to the country other than India don't you live on this soil and are you not buried under it or cremated on its ghats if you live and die on this land if you live and die on this land then bear in mind that hindu and muslims is but a religious word hindu and muslim is but a religious word all the hindus and muslims and christians who live in this country are one nation all the muslims hindus and christians who live in this country are one nation sir sayed ahmed khan was not merely the founder of the institution at aligarh He was one of the most distinguished architects of modern India. He was the first Muslim to catch a glimpse of the dynamic character of the coming age and he dedicated his whole life to what he thought to be supreme need of the hour the uplift of the Indians by aspiring them of the problems of the modern world. It was his firm conviction that unless the mind of his people was freed from the shackles of the intellectual slavery and orthodoxy there could be no progress he ceaselessly fought against conver- conservatism superstition and inertia and become a social and moral force which accelerated the process of transition from the medieval to the modern age he patiently bore all this and never allowed his ideals to be affected or impaired by the criticism of misinformed contemporaries professor khalid ahmed nizami said about him sir sayed stood for dynamic movement of society according to the needs of the time supremacy of reasons in all the matters spiritual and mundane liberty of conscience and freedom of expression hard work and continuous struggle to make up leave is secular in all spheres of human relationship secular in all spheres of human relationship and concept of nation which overrode all parochial considerations sir sayed's greatest contribution was a healthy scientific attitude of mind without which no human progress is possible of the numerous educational and social reforms movement initiated in the post 1857 era the aligarh movement was one of the most significant sir sayed's aim was to extricate his people from the meshes of obscurantism and inertia and inculcate in them a scientific attitude of mind which alone could help them in making up leeway he struggled hard in the face of bitter opposition to create an awareness of the swiftly changing patterns of life in an age of scientific and industrial development his secular and scientific approach inspired a whole generation said late dr abdul alim former vice chancellor of aligarh sir sayed a far sighted educator and a profound thinker said dr tara chand famous historian sir sayed was a friend of the hindus he said nothing repugnant to their sentiments and continued to enjoy the good will and confidence of the hindus till the last days of his life the punjab observer wrote on february 6 1897 the venerable sayed is like a great solitary palm in boundless desert and serves as a landmark both for hindus and muslims said hsk bhatnagar a brief sketch of his life Sir Sayed Ahmed Khan was born on 17th October 1817 in a respectable family at Delhi. He received his early education from his mother and others. Both his parental and maternal grandfathers were 
recipients of honors from Mughal kings. His maternal grandfather was a mathematician and wrote books on it. After the death of his father in 1838, he joined service and in 1841 became Munsif. He contributed articles to his brother's paper, Sayyadul Akbar, when he was hardly 17 years old. In 1840, his first book, Jame Jam, A History on Mughal Kings, appeared. When Sir Sayyad was serving as Sadre Amin at Delhi, 1846-54, he produced a work on archaeology, Asaru Sanadid. It contains description of forts, buildings, there is sketches to scale inscriptions in Sanskrit, Pali, Persian, Arabic, Sovereign and Scholars of Delhi, etc. This is the first work on archaeology in any Indian language and was translated in English and French and on the basis of this he was made honorary member of the Royal Asiatic Society. He set the standard of deep research with the publication of first and revised edition of this work. After this he edited three books, Tarikh-e Fairoz Shahi, Taskira e Jahangiri, Aina e Akbari, and most important chronicles of the medieval India, thus setting standards for editing. When Sir Sayyad was at Bijnor, the Indian mutiny broke out in 1857. It was a period of storm and stress. Out of suspicion, Indians were executed and their properties were confiscated. Sir Sayyid had already seen the fate of Tipu Sultan, Sayyid Ismail Shaheed and the failure of Raja Ram Mohan Roy's mission and believed the supremacy of British people in such that armed conflict with them is, is no salvation. Rather peaceful and convincing methods should be adopted and a sense of inferiority be created in them in order to make them quit India. To achieve this end, he set himself to bring about reforms educationally, socially, politically, etc. and bring the Indians to the level of the Britishers in all fields. Sir Sayyid dauntlessly proves in his book, Asbab e Bhagavat e Hind, Causes of Indian Mutiny, that the rule of Britishers is defective because of the non-admission of Indians in Legislative Council. One of the main causes of Indian mutiny is the overzealous activity of missionaries with the support of ruling class. Sir William Morris, late, later Lieutenant Governor of Northeastern Provinces, book on the life of Prophet Muhammad was full of misrepresented facts. He borrowed money and mortgaged his house and went to London in 1869 to have a direct approach to the source book of Morris' book and disproved the fact, misrepresented facts in, this, in his book, Khutbate Ahmadiyya. At London, he closely studied the working of Oxford and Cambridge universities and founded an institution at Aligarh in, 19, in 1870. To create interest, scientifically, he started a scientific society in 1863 at Ghazipur. Later, it was shifted to Aligarh in 1864. Lectures of scientists and others were arranged, books of history, Persia, Egypt, Greece, China and on agriculture, science, mathematics, political economy, comparative policies were translated into Urdu. An organ of scientific society, the Aligarh Institute Gazette was started both in English and Urdu. Sir Syed was impressed by the papers, spectator and tattlers and started a quarterly Tahzibul Akhlaq social reformer and wrote articles after articles to point out the defects of the society regarding selfish motives, disregard for punctuality, lack of moral sense in the dealing with man to man, the illogical and un-Islamic rites and ceremonies attached to our marriages and lack of interest on agriculture and commerce etc. He disapproved hyperbole and exaggeration in poetry. His style is noteworthy for the simplicity of expression. He wrote a book on Urdu grammar. He was dissatisfied with the lithographic printings. He had a press of his own and provided modern types. 
his book and papers were printed in it sir sayed believed in the rationalistic is approach of religion he wrote commentary of quran professor hk sherwani writes for sir sayed the touchstone of true religion the true word of god is nature and here he propounds a new doctrine that nature is the work of god while the book is the word of god agar aapne channel ko subscribe nahi kiya hai to zarur subscribe kare बेल आइकन भी प्रेस करें ताकि खबरें आप तक बर वक्त पहुँच सके मजीद अपडेट्स के लिए आप व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप भी ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं लिंक डिस्क्रिप्शन में मौजूद है